Welcome to the Friday edition of Wands World and I'm continuing my theme of unpacking Christmas and here's my advent wreath that I made last week and you've seen it uh, lit once. What I'm going to do is I'm going to replace all the tinsel which I started with because I happen to have it but I'm not going to continue with it because three years ago this advent wreath was burning away merrily or rather the candles were burning away merrily and then hot wax dripped on the tinsel and it all caught fire. And that was because I wasn't paying attention I had it um, I had it uh, like merrily <laughs> glowing away in the dark whilst I was working wasn't paying attention and then all of a sudden I look around and everything's up in smoke. So I'm going to replace the tinsel now that I've got some things to replace it with. I've got some various candies. I'm going to place them in there instead of the tinsel and they <laughs> won't burn. So my theme today is decorating in general, but I really want to talk about nativity sets in particular. So let's get started down that path. So here you can see that I've replaced the tinsel with a variety of packaged sweeties of various sorts. There's some gummies and uh, some lemon and um, uh, matcha and uh, also some chocolate stars and I've tried to make sure that the packages are in Christmas colors like um, uh, gold and uh, red and green and uh, some candy canes and um, I put the stars back for the uh, um, the tinsel stars but I'm not gonna have a fire hazard anymore so so that's uh, that's my advent wreath now let's talk about um, uh, nativity sets. And I used to have one, and in fact I used to have two, um, but my main one was one that uh, I'd had for 20-25 uh, years in New York and um, basically consisted of a, um, a baby Jesus and um, Mary and Joseph and some shepherds and some wise men and uh, some animals and an angel and I didn't have uh, anything for them to go into I used to each year make some sort of structure out of gingerbread and I'll talk about gingerbread um, constructions in another video. I'm not sure I'm going to make any gingerbread this year. Uh, it's a lot of work to make a gingerbread house or a gingerbread castle which I've done and so forth. Uh, but I used to make a, a sort of gingerbread shed and I would put the angel on the, on, I make a roof and put the angel on the roof and um, and then inside was um, a manger and it was empty and I had um, some a few animals um, most of them came with the set the original set but I had others I had a little cat that I I had I put in there and um, so forth and and the main 
thing about it was that I constructed the, the shed and had the manger and the animals in there right at the very beginning of Advent. Nothing else, no, no, no individuals, no, no, no angels, nothing. Now, if you go around, uh, not just uh, the, the Christian world, but you go around the world, you'll find, you'll find nativities of all kinds in all places. This one um, I found at a big cathedral in um, Hanoi in Vietnam at Christmas time, uh, life size, um, and uh, all, all um, anachronistic, uh, you know, because everything's in place um, at the same time, um, and it's not even Christmas Day, and the, and Jesus has already been born, and um, the angels already there, and and so forth, and that's. Uh, that's fairly typical of nativities, and it just it doesn't it doesn't have that feeling of unpacking that I'm talking about in this in this series. That Advent is expectation is waiting for things to happen. Now, from my video from uh, Tuesday. You'll remember that I spoke about the nativity as being a, a strange concoction of Luke's story, which is all about the shepherds and the birth itself, and Matthew's story, which doesn't talk about the birth at all, but speaks about the journey of the Magi and their visit to Jerusalem and then they go to a house in Bethlehem. So that you can't really imagine <laughs> that Mary gave birth and placed Jesus in a manger and then he stayed there pretty much um, for several weeks until the Magi finally arrived and then they hightailed it off to Egypt. I mean, it makes no sense. In fact, we don't even really get any full story about the birth itself. We just get the idea that Mary and Joseph had to journey to Bethlehem for the reasons that, as I mentioned last time, are nonsensical. But anyway, they, they're strangers in the town and she gives birth. Where did she give birth? Did she give birth in a cattle shed? And who helped her? D did they, they just like let her get on with it? Um, it was a story that was clearly written by a man um, that historically uh, before modern medicine and hospitals and whatnot, there were midwives who would help with birth. And f even in the absence of a midwife, there would be groups of women who were all experienced at childbirth who would get together to help a woman um, as she was giving birth. It was very much a, a community of women and anthropologists have even argued that the development of culture itself uh, focused originally on the fact that giving birth is difficult and, and it doesn't necessarily require intervention by other people. Sometimes it does. Um, there are all kinds of things that can go wrong and, and need intervention. But even when it doesn't need specific intervention, it's helpful if there are experienced women there together to give um, support and comfort to the woman giving birth. And that that core of women um, who are supportive of each other is the nucleus of human culture. So the birth of Jesus. How did it happen? Who, who were the women 
who helped Mary. Where did it happen? Did it actually happen in a cattle barn? I, you know, I suppose it would be okay, I mean, to lie on straw. Uh, after all, um, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, shepherds have slept in barns on straw. So there's nothing to stop a woman giving birth in, in a bed of straw and then and then having given birth and and all of that, wrapping the baby up and <laughs> and having no crib, laying it in a manger. That's all, you know, potentially understandable if if you but who who in a strange town was there to help Mary when she gave birth? Luke doesn't mention it because he's a man, he doesn't he doesn't know about these things. He doesn't care. And you've got, to, you've got to imagine that after that first night that they found somewhere a little bit more comfortable to stay um, until, until they had to go back home. So maybe they eventually found somebody who would take them in, somebody would say, oh my goodness, this is terrible. She's just given birth and her baby's lying in a manger. We've got to, we've got to take her into my, our house. So what you have to do if you're, if you're decorating with a nativity set is you've got to think about the logistics of the situation. So right now, it's just whatever a cattle shed cows are eating being milked um, you've got a manger you've got animals you can put whatever animals you want in for the, but no people um, there's no mention of um, of who owned the cattle shed and or what they were doing there so you don't you don't put anyone like that in there. You just, it's just empty. Um, and it remains empty until Christmas Eve. And then on Christmas Eve, you can, I mean, you can't really place Mary in there um, because she's not pregnant. But, you know, okay, so we'll, we'll sort of we can nod about that and say, "All right, let's just we'll just put Mary and Joseph in the cattle shed, and just imagine that somehow or other she gives birth." And then later, you can add the various other components. You can add the shepherds and an angel. And then after Christmas Day, take them away. Now, strictly speaking, you should also take away Mary and Joseph and the baby and put them somewhere else. But let's just imagine that you, like, you keep them there um, symbolically. But somewhere a long, long, long way away, you know, all the way across the room, um, You've got the Magi, and day by day by day, you bring them closer and closer. And they're going to arrive on Epiphany. That's January 6th. That's the very, very tail end of the Christmas season. So just slowly moving towards Bethlehem, and then finally arriving on the last day, the day that you're going to take your decorations down and move into the slightly uh, short period between um, Epiphany and um, Shrove Tuesday, Ash Wednesday and into Lent. Uh, Christmas and Lent and Easter all flow together into one holy season. It's a, approximately six months long. 
and um, I'm going to so I'm going to keep talking about unpacking even when I get to Epiphany I'm going to talk about how we're going to move from there into Lent and into Easter and um, all the points along the way so what else am I going to do for decorating not much um, in the past um, until I had a son I very rarely had a Christmas tree um, I, d I didn't have a Christmas tree when I lived at my university because they, they didn't allow um, trees in the dormitories and I was living in an apartment in the dormitories and they didn't allow it so I had um, my gingerbread house was my main um, sort of decorative item I did have a few lights and um, I did have a, a Victorian uh, Christmas garland that I hung from the ceiling um, which I, I kept for many 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 years when I had a son uh, he he really wanted a Christmas tree so we we did that but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna have a Christmas tree here I have no I have no earthly reason to have a tree I'm gonna put up some lights at some point although at the moment I have a great deal of difficulty thinking about where to put the lights um, they don't have electric codes in Cambodia like they do in the United States where every so often uh, in every wall you have to have an electric outlet um, and I would like to put lights like maybe somewhere in this region you might see them uh, in a week or so uh, around the, um, the sofa where I'm sitting but there's no electrical outlet here the, there's the nearest one is all the way across the room to my right and all the way across the room to my left but the, the, the one to my left is closest but but the door is in the way and I don't want to have uh, the strand of lights uh, across the doorway uh, for, for safety reasons so I'm gonna have to figure that out also my tables over in the that in that left direction uh, just chock a block with um, all kinds of goodies um, including my uh, new food processor which I'm going to be using shortly I'm going to talk about making pastry and other things that's my Christmas present to myself I've got an extension cord which I think I'll probably use and I'll see what I could do to to fix up the lights don't know but I'm not going to do it just yet because we're still early into the season um, it'll be at least the second and possibly the third week but back when um, when I was um, teaching at university I didn't do much decorating at all until I finished teaching and I didn't finish teaching until a week before Christmas so I, I did a few things I made my puddings of course uh, stir up Sunday made my mincemeat um, I even um, made the like the outlines of a gingerbread house but I didn't do much decorating until I was free of my other commitments so I didn't get round to it until you know, about the third week in Advent and that's about the same uh, now and uh, the same was true in my church um, we'd, we'd say the, the, the various verses for the first candle the second candle but we wouldn't start Christmas carols we would start all the um, you know oh, come all ye faithful and uh, while well, shepherds watch and so I wouldn't do any of that until about the, the third week for the first and second week we would we would do advent candle um, ca carols like uh, O Come O Come Emmanuel um, um, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus 
carols that <laughs> most of the congregation would say, well, 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 we're in the Christmas season, we want to do Christmassy things. Well, you've got to, you've got to do the expectation. The, the Advent comes first, and you've got to enjoy that part, and, and then you can go hog wild. Do it slowly, and then it can be more explosive towards the end. So you'll see, in the, I think about the third week, I'll, I'll get some lights set up. But you don't want to wear yourself out with it. You, d you don't want to feel like they've been up the lights and the tree and, and, and everything has been up for months, or well, certainly weeks, um, and by Christmas Day you're tired of it. It should be new and fresh by Christmas Day. You should want to keep it up until Epiphany because it's only gone up on, let's say, the 20th of, of December. Then it's okay. Then, then, you, then you go through Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, the various days after to New Year and then to Epiphany, and, and then it ends. <sighs> I'm... Probably not <laughs> preaching to the choir, but I'd like to be. I'd like to think that some people will eventually follow my lead. So um, on Tuesday we will talk about St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas Day is actually Monday, and the day before that um, is, a, is an important day as well too. But I'm, I'll get around to St. Nicholas on Tuesday, and meanwhile have a good weekend. Enjoy your, your Advent peacefully and calmly, and I'll see you on Tuesday.